गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर प्रतीक्षा कोकाटे प्रोफेसर इन हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बॉटनी श्री शिवाजी कॉलेज ऑफ आर्ट्स कॉमर्स एंड साइंस सकोला सो टुडे वी विल फोकस ऑन द टॉपिक एनाटॉमी ऑफ मोनोकॉट लीव यू ऑल नो द मोनोकॉट लीव्स दे आर हैविंग द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स टू हैव द पैरल वेनेशन यूनिट टू स्टडी द मोनोकॉट लीव एनाटॉमी वी विल see the example of maize so the maize leaves they are anatomically they are having the nature that is isobilateral isobilateral leaves they are uh, placed vertically on the stem and so that both the surfaces that is dorsal and ventral surface they are equally uh, face the sunlight for the photosynthesis process when we study the anatomical nature of the isobilateral leaves anatomically also both the dorsal and ventral epidermis of these leaves they are similar in nature as well as uh, the middle portion that is the mesophyll tissue is also not well differentiated into the two different tissues that is also having the same type of cells in it so to study the anatomical structure of the maize leaf we have to cut it in a transverse plane or in a vertical plane so when we cut the maize leaf in a vertical plane we will see it is divided into the three major regions that is the epidermal region mesophyll tissue and vascular bundles so uh, we can see here in the figure it is having the upper epidermis lower epidermis and this is this portion is the mesophyll tissue and these are the vascular bundles so we will see in detail the epidermal region so uh, in the epidermal region you can see this is the upper epidermis and this is the lower epidermis now there is uh, slight differentiation into the upper and uh, lower epidermal region now you can see both the epidermal regions they are uniseriate means they are having a single layer of cells the cells they are somewhat elongated to oval in structure and these cells they are having the thickenings on it that is known as the cuticle now the upper epidermis as well as the lower epidermis they are not continuous one they are interrupted by presence of small apertures on it and those apertures you can see here those apertures are called as the stomata this type of stomata they are present on the upper as well as on the lower epidermis so this uh, epidermal regions they are having the cuticle and the stomatas on it besides this you can see here there is a presence of character characteristic cells here which are having the different structure than that of the normal epidermal cells the epidermal cells in some regions that is a region which is closer to the the mid rib region mid vein region uh, these cells they become enlarged in size they are larger in size then uh, these uh, cells they become colorless in uh, nature and they are empty inside uh, these cells nothing is present and they looks colorless uh, so these cells are the bully form cells or the motor cells so these cells bully form cells or the motor cells they are having a A typical function in this uh, maize leaf, they are uh, having the function to uh, help the leaf to curl. So when the curling happens, when the uh, concentration of the water in the leaf will become less, these cells, that is the bulbi form cells, will become flaccid, and they starts curling of the leaf. So uh, and during that curling, they responds to the water stress condition also now at the same time when the leaf portion is having the abundant amount of water in it the cells of the uh, bully form cells they will become full of water or we can call them as a turgid cell so when they will will become the turgid in nature the uncurling of the leaf takes place so you know the curling of the leaf takes place in this way 
and so this curling of the leaf when the curling of the leaf takes place it minimizes the surface of that particular leaf so naturally this curling of the leaf process helps to minimize the rate of transpiration so transpiration rate is minimized due to the curling of the leaf and this curling of the leaf takes place due to presence of the bully form cells so this is the important function which is carried out by the bully form cells and that is prominently seen from characteristically present in the epidermis of the maize leaf while the lower epidermis do not possess such type of the motor cells or bully form cells they only uh, have the stomata on it the next region you know the second region is the mesophyll tissue now in case of the uh, isobilateral leaves the important characteristic is what the mesophyll tissue do not differentiated into the palisade and spongy means what the mesophyll tissue which is present in between the two epidermal region this is the upper epidermis and this is the lower epidermis in between the upper epidermis and lower epidermis this portion consist of the mesophyll tissue now in case of the uh, maize leaf the mesophyll tissue this much portion consist of the mesophyll tissue is not differentiated into any different types of tissues that is the palisade and spongy but they are having the same type of cells in it no differentiation is there now which are those cells which consist of the mesophyll in the maize leaf that those are the chlorine chymatid cells so how is the nature of the chlorine chymatid cells you can see in this figure this is this portion is the complete portion is the mesophyll tissue and you can see the cells which are isodiametric in nature and they also possesses some dotted structures in it so this dotted structures that is nothing but the presence of chloroplast in it and you all know the structure uh, that is chloroplast which is that organelle which is present uh, the function of this is in the process of photosynthesis so photosynthesis process is carried out by the chloroplast which is present here and the result of which is the food is produced for the plant so this chlorine chymatid uh, cells which are present in the mesophyll cell uh, mesophyll tissue they are having the important function to produce to assimilate the food in the you all know the function of the leaf is the production of the food material but actually which part of the leaf is involved in the process of photosynthesis and in the process of food production that is the basically the mesophyll tissue because it consists the abundant uh, amount of the chloroplast in it which are shown here with the dotted structures so the mesophyll tissue is uh, the important tissue here uh, which is present in between the upper and lower epidermis next we will see the vascular bundles now vascular bundles here they are uh, conjoined collateral and open Uh, and uh, uh, sorry closed conjoint collateral and closed conjoint means both the xylem and phloem they are present in the same uh, bundle they are present in the same bundle and as there is no presence of cambium they are called as the closed and when the phloem is present only on one side of the xylem that is called as the collateral type of one vascular bundle and these vascular bundles you know they are arranged in a parallel nature this is the transverse section and they are arranged in this way each vascular bundle is surrounded by so this is the vascular bundle and each vascular bundle is surrounded by such type of barrel shaped cells and this barrel shaped cells this covering or the sheath which is seen around the vascular tissues that is xylem and phloem that is called as the bundle sheet which is also one of the typical characteristic seen in case of the so you have to mention this presence of bundle sheet because it is one of the important characteristic of the vascular bundles in the maize leaf now the vascular bundles which are present in the midrib portion they are larger in size and the vascular bundles which are present lateral to the midrib vascular bundle they are smaller in size you can see this is the midrib vascular bundle and these are the smaller ones they are the lateral vascular bundles now these lateral vascular bundles they are present at the regular intervals 
why this what uh, this uh, lateral vascular bundles they are representing they are representing nothing but the lateral veins they are representing lateral veins which are running parallel to each other so their position is fixed so the vascular bundles which are present laterally they are present at the uh, equal distance and at regular intervals so uh, how is the structure of each and every vascular bundle that we will see the vascular bundle consists of you know all that is xylem and phloem the xylem uh, is present on the upper side and phloem is present on the lower side in each vascular bundle the position of xylem is towards the upper epidermis and position of the phloem is towards the lower epidermis this is always the position of vascular tissues present in the every vascular bundle now what does xylem consist of xylem consist of the protoxylem element and metaxylem element now the two small protoxylem elements they are present here and these are the two large metaxylem elements so metaxylem and these are the two protoxylem elements they are present in the xylem tissue besides this there is presence of xylem tracheids or xylem parenchyma is present in between these two xylem elements and the phloem tissue is present on the lower side which consists of the phloem parenchyma sieve tubes and uh, companion cell in it so this is about the vascular bundle now when uh, you see the detailed structure you can see here this is the vascular bundle i will show you here this is the vascular bundle which is seen now each vascular bundle this is the midrib vascular bundle having the large two metaxylem elements this is the protoxylem element and there is presence of cavity here also the cavity is seen here that cavity is nothing but the lysigenous cavity lysigenous cavity is present here this cavity is generally formed by the disintegration of the protoxylem element protoxylem uh, element disintegrates and there is the development of cavity over here that cavity is called as the lysigenous cavity so the lysigenous cavity is formed by the disintegration of protoxylem element and now you can see there is the difference in between the um, uh, vascular bundles of the midrib portion and these are the vascular bundles of lateral veins these are smaller in size as compared to the midrib vascular bundle the second important difference is what here besides this uh, bundle sheet there is a presence of sclerenchymatous extended sheet we can call it as the extended bundle sheet so bundle sheet is further extended towards the both epidermal region so epider upper epidermal and lower epidermal region you can see here there is a dark colored double walled structure is present which is nothing but the sclerenchyma sclerenchyma is present there and this sclerenchyma is present only in the form of extended bundle sheath in case of the midrib vascular bundles so that is important thing which is uh, we have to remember that is not seen in case of the lateral vascular bundles now the presence of this sclerenchymatous extended bundle sheath the function of this is to provide the mechanical support to the leaf blade mechanical support is provided by uh, this sclerenchymatous but extended bundle sheath so that is regarding the vascular bundle the vascular bundles they consist of the metaxylem protoxylem elements in the xylem tissue and the phloem parenchyma in the uh, phloem tissue so thank you with this uh, we will uh, complete this uh, topic thank you once again